Hello, and welcome back to another session on data mining. Today, we are going to talk about an application of uh, regression methods in, um, in a project that uh, I was part of. Uh, and the project was to predict hurricane intensity using uh, infrared, image, infrared satellite imagery. So just before moving on, let me explain to you what a hurricane is. Uh, hurricanes are storm systems. Uh, they also they also go by different names. Some people call them cyclones. Uh, so let me see, and uh, some people call them typhoons. Okay, and some people call them hurricanes. And the reason for these differences is depending upon which ocean they occur in. Okay, so if it's in the in the Atlantic Ocean, we call them uh, hurricanes. If it's in the Pacific Ocean, we call them typhoons, and if they originate in the Indian Ocean, we call them cyclones. But typically, we can use the same word for all of them. So hurricanes are re these really massive storm systems, and they can cause a lot of damage to, uh, uh, to objects on land as well as at sea, because they are really, really, the wind speeds in them are really, really uh, fast. So we can have uh, wind speeds of about 130 knots or even 150 knots. Remember, a knot, one knot, is equal to about 1.8 kilometer per hour. Okay, so we can have wind speeds of about 300, up to even 300 kilometers per hour, and that is actually the way we measure the intensity of a hurricane. Imagine hitting something that is traveling at 300. Uh, kilometer an hour, that's gonna that's not gonna turn out well, right? So the, when these hurricanes hit land, they can cause massive damage. You can explore different statistics on that, but the damage is in terms of billions of dollars every year. So to understand hurricanes better and to uh, prepare for uh, hurricane damage or to evacuate people, uh, the United States has set up what is called a National Hurricane Center or NHC as part of uh, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Ad Administration, NOAA. And what these people do is uh, they operate specific planes, like this one, which are called hurricane hunters. And what these planes do is they fly through a hurricane with specific sensors on board that measure how fast the wind or the wind speeds within a hurricane, okay? And that is used to measure how, or assign an intensity value to a certain hurricane. So a hurricane like uh, this one, for example, this is a satellite image, by the way. This is what a hurricane uh, actually looks like. These can be really, really big, up, up to about 150 kilometers or even further than that across, okay? So that they can be pretty big in terms of scale. And uh, we, well, these planes, these specific planes are used to measure the intensity of these hurricanes. Uh, if you, if the, these planes measure that there's a wind speed or a sustained wind speed within the hurricane of about 130 knots, they're assigned a certain category. If there are, uh, there are wind speed is, the maximum sustained wind speed within the hurricane for up to two minutes is only 26 knots and it's assigned a lower category. However, then measuring these hurricanes, measuring the speed of these hurricanes by flying planes through them, is risky. It's not that risky because when these hurricanes are at sea, they don't have any debris in them, so you can fly a plane through it. Uh, the plane does have to be reinforced in certain ways and has sense to has has to have sensors attached to it. But at the same time, you don't want to spend that amount of money, especially when you have uh, satellites that can look on uh, on look down on these hurricane systems from from the top from space. And they can look look at them uh, night and day using infrared imagery, and that gives us a temperature uh, map of the hurricane. So imagine uh, seeing a hurricane. So if you got a hurricane like this one, imagine seeing uh, it from a satellite that is over here, and that satellite has specific uh, cameras. Those infrared cameras can see a large region of the Earth, and let's say we are looking at that particular region, and we can see some cloud structures. And we can also assign temperature. We can get temperature values for each of these pixels. Uh, for these images, each pixel is pretty big. Each pixel corresponds to kilometers across. Uh, and and uh, for each pixel, we measure the average temperature at that particular region on Earth. 
So these blue bits that you see over here are areas of low temperature, whereas typically these higher temperature values are tropical, uh, tropical waters. And the reason hurricanes are formed are actually because we have warm waters in the tropics, and then those give rise to these really big massive clouds which start twirling, and then you get hurricanes. That's a very hand-waving explanation of how hurricanes are formed. But uh, there's a lot of really cool meteorological and physical science that goes uh, into the explaining how these cloud uh, structures are formed. These are the biggest thermodynamic engines on our planet, these hurricanes, okay? So uh, if you look into, if you, if you see that uh, once we, as we increase the, uh, the as, a, as a hurricane increases in intensity in its wind speed, we see that different types of cloud structures are formed. And this is the famous eye of the storm, which you can see over here as well, right? And this is an area through which if you are exactly on top of it, you would ideally be able to see the sea surface down below, okay? But these things can have a very large temperature gradient. So these blue bits that you have are areas of very low temperature with temperatures in about minus 100, minus 100 Celsius whereas the sea surface is at a temperature of around, let's say, typically 30 degrees Celsius. So there can be a very large temperature difference um, uh, along the vertical length of a hurricane. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to use this training data that has been collected by these brave pilots or hurricane hunters. Uh, we have flown through these uh, hurricanes and we also have the associated uh, satellite imagery or infrared imagery for these. And what we want to do, just like the example I gave you of predicting someone's age, what we want to do is for a given hurricane, hurricane image, we can want to predict what would be its uh, intensity. So let's say if we know that this is what a cloud structure looks like at a time when the hurricane intensity as measured through our sensors was at 88 knots, and we want to use this training data to develop a regressor that when given a new image of a hurricane uh, would be able to predict whether uh, what's the intensity of that okay and we design a method together with people at uh, the national hurricane center uh, and we used a bunch of training data sets and we extracted some features from these hurricane images specifically what we did is that if you, if you go back and you look at this particular image the more well structured this cloud structure is the higher the intensity is so what we the features that we extracted from a given image were uh, were uh, the were, were measuring the disorder or the entropy or the variance of the structure of this hurricane or this cloud system that you see over here, and uh, we got, got a bunch of features, and then we got this uh, support vector machine regressor. We also tried with ordinary least square regressor. So I think with that understanding, you should be able to design this system. So if you want further details, you are welcome to read this paper. So what we then did is we correlated a given example for a, for a given image. We predicted its, its intensity or hurricane intensity and we compared it to the real value. And we calculated how much error we have on the x-axis in this is the actual intensity in knots for a given image. So each dot that you see is a given image from a hurricane and there are multiple images that have been collected. And on the y-axis is the intense, predicted intensity score. So for a given image, let's say this one, for example, uh, the predicted, the actual intensity of this image is at around, around 75 knots, and we are predicting it at around 65 or 70 knots, so it's not that far off. These sensors have errors, and then it's, uh, we are using an indirect observation, so that's why it's expected that we would not be able to recover perfectly uh, those, uh, um, uh, those intensities. But what we saw is that we were able to predict pretty, uh, pretty good. We got a pretty good correlation between our predicted and actual uh, intensities, and uh, it's a pretty uh, robust way of. Uh, it was pretty accurate and robust way of determining uh, intensity of hurricanes. One important thing over here is to notice that for a given hurricane, we may have a series of pictures. Let's say we've got Hurricane Katrina, for example which happened in 2005 and it caused massive damage in the US. We can have a bunch of different satellite images. It's not a single image. And for each of those intense, those images, we have a corresponding intensity value for that and a time value 
uh, in knots, right? Uh, the time value is, of course, not in knots, but the intensity value is in knots, and then we've got an image. Now, I can develop a machine learning method that splits this data, half, uses half of it in training and half of it in testing, but that's not going to be useful for a new hurricane because this is going to lead to overestimation of accuracy. So what we did is we left one hurricane year out or left all hurricanes of one year out and uh, use those as the validation data set. Okay, so we saw that for Hurricane Rita, uh, on the x-axis we have the time and if we generated the predicted intensity profile for that, we saw that it correlates very well with observed uh, intensity profile for that case. Uh, this is the, we developed a deep learning model for it, which we call Deep Fury. And uh, it's actually a better estimator of measuring uh, uh, hurricane intensities. It, they give a lower root mean square error across different years when the data from that year is held out. And we use data from other years to train a, train a regressor. Okay, so it's available for you. To, if you want to read more about it, there's a paper available. I'll be posting a link on of that on the course web page. But the main idea of introducing this particular problem is to give you some practical sense of how these regression models are used. So in this case, you had an image and we wanted to correlate or identify different patterns that uh, we had uh, and, and to try to understand uh, uh, the, the formation of these hurricanes as well as what actually predicts the, what factors actually determine the intensity of the hurricane, okay? And there are some required readings as well for the hurricane, uh, for the uh, regression bit. Uh, you can see those here. I'll be posting those links. The most important ones are actually, uh, the most useful in terms of coding ones are given over here. You can use scikit-learn. There's a very good linear model library that allows you to do different linear model regression. And you can also explore support vector regression and ordinary least squares. We did that for uh, for different types of class regression models in, in predicting hurricane intensity. We saw that support vector regression actually gave pretty good uh, root mean square errors. However, the deep learning model actually beat support vector regression. Uh, and we're gonna talk about that when we cover deep learning models. Thank you.